All right, guys, I know you've been waiting for this one. This week we have a top of the range audio file, three head, HX Pro, Dolby F, Fisher Price cassette deck. All right. I think most of us have seen these before. I certainly had one when I was a kid. I think mine was brown and cream. Uh, the same color as my wife runs. But this one is red and yellow. And if we look around it on the bottom, we'll see that it says uh 1980 and 1989 fisher price so i'm gonna go division of the quaker oats company that's quite interesting assembled in china uh this is a fish price uh 80s kids cassette deck and it isn't working so it's quite funky really to be honest with you um it's got a record function it's got a microphone it's got a speaker in the back of which i have no idea whether it works and um it's pretty well built, it's made for kids, it has some nice little chocolate stains on the buttons there and a very satisfying eject mechanism which will take your eye out if you're not careful. So I picked this up uh, just for a bit of fun really, see what I could do with it, maybe it needs belts or something. Seller said that uh, it doesn't work, maybe a loose wire. So to me maybe a loose wire seems a bit specific for an eBay listing. So let's have a look. So um, obviously if you were, you know, five year old, you would be listening to Bruce. But um, I've put some batteries in it. There is no light on the battery indicator. Interestingly, the play buttons and whatnot don't do anything. Uh, you can't press that down unless you've got a tape in. So with the tape in batteries in, nothing, absolutely nothing. So this should be a case of pulling these uh, six flip screws off the back and let's see what's inside. So some of the longest screws I have ever encountered on a cassette deck. And uh, we've got a battery compartment just here. And uh, it takes four C size batteries, which is the middle size batteries. And let's be honest, I mean, that's not gonna be cheap. Firing C size batteries through one of these every, I don't know, week seems excessive. But let's see if we can remove the back on this. Mm -hmm. and let's have a look. So, inside is actually better quality than I thought it was going to be. There's a lot of plastic parts and there's a lot of reed switches and whatever else um, associated with this. The belt seems to be in reasonable condition. We have a, a ZJZ 8 ohm 1 watt speaker on the back there. The wires look pretty good, if I'm honest with you. Um, and from initial look, it doesn't seem too bad. There's some strange uh, staining around the motor there, which is uh, a bit... Mm, doesn't look too good. So I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put some batteries in and oh these uh buttons just come off by the look of it we can remove this <laughs> they're going to go through the dishwasher and it looks like we can take the transport out through these three screws here this is a volume knob little amplifier and uh, maybe we can have a look at these caps and all that you know we'll do it a little bit of justice but first i want to see if it's getting power so i'm going to um stick some batteries in here put a multimeter on the output port so the power supply the power supply the, these wires are melted into place so we're gonna to have to slice through this as well um but generally in fact all the wires are melted to the to the housing generally doesn't look too bad i'm sure i've got a belt that we can fit this on as well so let's uh, get the multimeter, get some batteries in and see what this comes out with. So very strangely, as I have just fired four batteries in there, I wondered if it was a switch. So I wanted to find out what activated this switch and lo and behold, it's running, which is very confusing. So if I press play, you get a click from the speaker and it works. So that's a bit strange that it didn't work when it was cased up. So perhaps there is a loose wire. Um, fast forward works. Rewind works. I think that was playing the other ones. I think this one's record. 
So we can have a bit of a play with that and record some voice on it. But I think what I'm going to do is just uh, whip this belt off and replace this belt. And then see if we can identify the wire that's maybe getting squished. Let's play it. In fact, let's, let's play it. It's still playing away. It's only got six volts in it, so we're pretty good with that. It is playing, it's playing very slowly by the sound of it. So I could also do with finding out how to adjust the pot on this motor, which could be anywhere. I have no idea. Good luck finding a service manual. Um strange one. So first of all, let's change this belt. So I found a belt in my stock of handy belts. For various tape decks so we've, we've got that but what i'd like to do is uh pull this board out and i'd like to take this this metal cover off here and try and find a pot for that motor because to me it sounds a bit slow just from playing it there for a second so i'm going to snip these bits of plastic down here which is actually very fragile and then we can remove these wires which should hopefully allow us to pull this amplifier board out without damaging anything. Maybe it's just quiet by default, you know, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, I just want to give everything a good clean anyway. It's almost like they've made it not to uh, to service it. I think I'm going to take these. There's, there's one, uh, two, and three screws there, which seem to be this cream white surround around the outside. So I'm going to take these out and see where we get with that. Right, now they're out. I think I'm going to... Uh, I've snipped the wire here, these plastic tabs. Let's get this wire free a little bit from the speaker so that we can remove this cream bit, I think, is probably the best bit. Next on the cards is I'm going to remove these two screws and get this mortar surround out of the way. Because it seems to be stopping us from getting that amp out. Possibly, if we can. Nope. So let's try and... It's so simplistic, yet it's so horrendous to try and take apart. There's one bit, there's two bits. All right. We're stunted by these connectors down here. Bring the light a little bit closer. Right, so uh, I've just basically made a hash of these two wires here as I was. Everything's melted into place. So in order to get it out, what can you do? So I'll have to get that a bit of a resold. It's just the insulation, I think. So now that can be moved as well. And here we are. So now we can view the amplifier board, which is okay. Uh, just move my light a bit closer that's better so what we've got then so we've got our standard uh, record and play switch let's try and pull this there we've got standard record and play cut off switch uh, one two three four five six seven eight nine ten caps some resistors uh, a switch that is covered in grease and everything else seems pretty good if i'm honest with you uh caps all seem fine um, nothing major on the other side, no real indication of any issues. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to pull the motor out, try and find a pot on the back of it. There's nothing on the back to adjust it, and see if we can adjust the speed some more. Ha. Success. 
So a damn good spray of uh, deoxy into that record switch. Just because even if they don't work, they're generally a bit rubbish. And we'll stick a little bit into that volume pot as well. I'll stick this comedy knob back on just to wind it around. Oh, that's loads freer. It seems to be full of grease. I don't particularly know why it's full of grease, but uh, it is. That's good. Okay. And that can go in the dishwasher along with the buttons, I think. All that is going in the dishwasher. So this is a, uh, what is the make of that? I can't even see the make of that motor, but it's EG530 AD6F. Um, is there a date on it? It says 2003, it might be 240303. So maybe this is newer than we thought then, unless that's 1903, I'm not entirely sure. But I think what I'll do is, there's no obvious signs of anything wrong with the wiring. Um, there's a little nip up there, but that looks like it's the an earth that goes to the to the light to say there's a battery in it. So that's not a problem. So let's um, I'm gonna fire a test tape through it and see how loud it is, and maybe we can do something about the volume. Because it doesn't seem very loud at all. Maybe that's the point. I don't remember mine being particularly loud when I was playing the Dukes of Hazard theme through it. And then we can adjust the speed and whatnot and get a new belt on. And uh, that's the capstan spin's really nice. Get the heads clean, everything else, give it a bit of a blowout. So I'm going to just test all these caps just to see what I like. But to be honest with you, they all seem fine. I've been through most of these now, and to be honest with you, these are all reporting the correct uh, microfarads that the are on the caps. Yeah, that one's good. And these last two down here, 50 volts, 7 microfarads, 50 volt. Yeah, it's 0.5. And that one is 95. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that one's 85 microfarads. 0.47. Okay. All right, so first things first, um, there's no access point to adjust that motor. And I can't adjust it with a test tape in it uh, without it being in place because it obviously needs to power the, the transport. So I'm going to drill a hole uh, on the back of the casing just down there and that should line up with our little part on the back of the motor and then we can hopefully get a decent tone for it Right, now that's done, let's just screw this uh, motor back in place. Before I do that, I think I'd like to clean the heads, but because the heads are at this end and they come down, there's no access. So I'm just, uh, I've removed two screws here. I'm just gonna lift the transport out in order to uh, give the heads a bit of a clean. If I can just flick it around, and we can give it a bit of an inspection without losing all these arms and whatnot, which isn't very simple to do actually. <laughs> um, we're held by this wire down here. So just point out the heads are absolutely minging and, and as is the pinch roller. So I think we're going to give that a clean as well. Clean all the heads. Dicky, tiny little plastic recording head. Everything else seems pretty good to be honest with you. So I'm going to give that head a clean up. Ooh. 
Nice. You have no top end on this with a head like that. Capstan is the same, it's absolutely filthy, man. Years of um, God knows what's been through this. Look at, look at that. That is disgusting. A little bit of oil down there, I think, down into the, the capstan. Just a smidgen. And I think that is a, a little bit of oil on that pinch roll as well. Just a tiny bit. Sort of the wire wound float route. Now that's done, I put the transport back in, put the motor back in, put that white surround back in that retains everything, see how it sounds. Right, so where are we now then? So transport's back in, these two screws are in, the motor housing is uh, part of these outer screws, which is the ones that retain this cream bit on the outside. Maybe it was white originally, I'm not entirely sure. Let's go wiggle the motor a little bit. And stick these back in. Just making sure I've not pinched any of these wires as well. Like that. And then I think what I'm going to do is try and get this board back in. Uh, I have connected this up to a massive speaker. Uh, purely just to see how it sounds, whether it's a speaker or a knacker, but I think the speaker's okay. And then I'm uh, going to run a test tape through it, make sure the heads are all clean, see if we get a kind of tone through it and see if we can sort the speed out with the pot on the back of the motor. I just forgot to put this uh, this wheel back on conveniently, I'll give it a bit of a clean. Hopefully that'll just sit back in there. All that grease and gunk off that rotary switch. Are we back in? Yeah, that's us back in. And then I think all these wires are basically just stuffed down the back of there in a kind of uh, unceremonious way. I'm just going to try and stuff them back in without damaging any. To be honest with you, that's the best place for them. And then these are rooted around here. Out of the way of the motor, like so, and then we'll do a little bit of soldering iron action and remelt those where it's held, and then a bit of a function test, I think, just to make sure that we haven't got anything in the way. But that looks good. These two need to go out of the way somewhere, which is going to be over here, and the same with this one. I think, I think that's right. No, I was wrong. They go down there. This is for the speaker wire. Good. Right then, test tape. All right, see, so we have Spectroid again. Let's turn the volume up a little bit. Speed calibration tones. Usual volume warning. 3,000 hertz. Very slow. Two eight one two. Let's crank that up a bit. Nearly there. I'll take that. A little bit high, maybe. There we go. We'll go with that. Mm. <laughs> awesome. These are the fiddliest things I've ever encountered. They're yeah, absolutely atrocious and I should never have taken them off, ever. 
There we go. Right. <laughs> right, so button her up and then we can enjoy some royalty free music, which I've actually managed to get this time from the old uh, YouTube audio library. So hopefully there is absolutely no copyright claims or whatever. I actually sat and listened to it the other week while I was recording the tape for it and uh, it was alright, some reasonable music. Alright, so back together, finished, sorted. The worst part of that entirely was repositioning these buttons. That is not fun at all. I think I did it six times trying to get the case back together. So we have some royalty free music on a Fuji DR2 which is a Type 2, so you know, probably the first time a Type 2 has ever been anywhere near this. Uh, that way around, it's upside down. So, let's see. Ooh. Maybe a Type 2 doesn't work. That's interesting. Why doesn't a Type 2 work? Let me see. Where's that stupid Bruce Springsteen tape? Back in business. That's weird. Due to the positioning of the uh, the the tape in sensors, uh, Type Two tapes that have the the holes in them to detect a Type Two tape uh, don't work. So I've had to tape them up. So let's see how this sounds. It's not going to sound amazing. Possibly, we'll see. No crackling in the volume. <laughs> it doesn't sound bad. <laughs> I, that's not bad. That's that's way less rubbish than I thought that was going to be. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Fast forward is quite slow, and weirdly. Forward and rewind the wrong way around. Um, I suppose it's not because the tape's upside down compared to what we're used to. I mean, yeah, it's tinny, but. Amazing. So. Is that the first fish price that's ever been serviced by a reasonably competent person? Um, who knows? Oh, do you know what? One thing we haven't tried. What we did not try is the recording and a microphone. So if you have a nervous disposition, turn off now. And let's see how this works. Test, 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 one, two, nine, seven, twelve, seventeen. Just like a woman, just like a man. Do, 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 do. And what's weird is you have to press the button down to rewind as well. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> A bit of feedback on it. Test, 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 one, two, nine, seven, twelve, seventeen. Just like a woman, just like a man. Do, 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 do. Awesome, and you've been treated to a bit of Dylan. Watch, I get copyright straight for that now. Right, there you go, done, finished. Go about your day, and um, yeah, have a great day. See you on the next one.